All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS live stream. It's been quite a while since we've done one of those, but you know, uh, first there was uh, holidays, then I was quite sick. I'm still a bit sick, so you know, if I cough here and there, then apologies in advance. Uh, but there we go. Finally, the state where I can uh, pretty much comfortably talk for you know more than a half minute, uh, like a couple of minutes. So I thought we'd do another live stream, and this time around, we're um, basically I'm planning to um, try out Deno, which is the new upcoming uh, tool from uh, Ryan Dahl, uh, the original creator of Node.js, and. Uh, this one is supposed to be sort of an evolution of Node.js that is better, faster, secure, and uh, nicer, I guess, to use than Node with a lot of uh, concerns that Node has addressed, basically. Uh, why I decided to do this now is essentially because it is nearing the version 1.0 release. There is, I believe, an uh, umbrella issue that basically, yes, there you go, the major features for version 1.0. The plan right now, if I read correctly, is to release it by the end of January, if everything goes correctly. There we go. And there's just a few to-dos left, basically, to close this off and uh, release a Deno v1. So it's, you know, we can basically consider the current version to be what we will get once the stable first stable version is released. Now, uh, as usual, I'm going to be using the Windows for that. Uh, I have already installed it in my uh, VSL uh, side of windows so just using the curl here nothing fancy it is available on any platform because uh, it's basically built in rust so you know it's very portable very tiny so what's the point of deno well the thing is they've recently added the manual that actually addresses this quite nicely so the manual is just like one super large file for now which i imagine would get split up eventually into uh, multiple files but uh, it does a very good job of explaining what is Deno. So essentially, it's a mix of V8, which is the you know the JavaScript engine from the Chrome team, Rust, which is the language from uh, Mozilla, which again you know it's already at this point pretty interesting mix, and then the Tokyo, which is the Rust library for um, asynchronous uh, like I think it's threading basically. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. So the idea is. Um, the goals is basically to ship only one executable, which is Deno, that has all the tools that you need by default, including uh, formatting, including testing, including uh, compiling, whatever the hell you can imagine, basically. And um, then it provides the secure defaults, which means that uh, you, unless specifically allowed, as it says here, scripts that you run cannot access file system, cannot access environment, cannot access network, and they are basically heavily sandboxed, the same as what you get in a browser, right? Which is a very interesting approach to the issues with um, with the whole like node ecosystem and the attacks that we had on it, right? Uh, hey, Samohovitz, welcome to the stream. Yes, it is a new studio. I moved here a month ago, I guess, and it doesn't really need a uh, soundproofing. So, you know, the sound is good enough like this. So this is why I am without it. I'm still pondering if I should put it back anyway, because, you know, kind of makes it look a bit nicer. But uh, anyway, <laughs> OK, going back to Deno, another of goals is browser compatibility. So the idea is that as long as you don't use Deno specific namespaces, all the browser modules should work as is without any changes because the browsers also use the ES modules and stuff like this. And then you got the built-in tooling for unit testing, linting, code formatting, and everything else basically, and also TypeScript support. And uh, yeah, so the, the core differences between Deno and Node that it doesn't use NPM, so the modules just are imported using the URLs, which I think is actually a really cool idea and uh, makes the module management uh, hundred times easier, right? Because all I have to do to import a module is literally just import a remote file that is then going to be fetched by Deno, cached, and served from whenever you uh, want to use it, right? Obviously, the versioning is a bit of a problem, but then again, you know, if you version the APIs, you already dealt with this, so you know how to do that. Again, there's no package JSON because you don't really need it because modules are fetched from the URLs. Um, all async actions and then a return a promise. So this was one of the things that uh, Ryan Dahl said during his, I think, initial presentation that he regretted not relying on promises more in Node.js. And this is why we have callbacks everywhere while, you know, still while promises are a lot nicer to work with. 
And then, yes, okay, we already talked about explicit permissions, and then there's the uh, den always dies and caught errors, which I think is the case with Node.js mostly, as of the latest versions at least. And yeah, so we got the S modules. Require is not supported, but there is uh, basically a discussions, at least, at least I've seen them in the GitHub repo, uh, on providing sort of the compat layer between the Node.js and Deno so that you can actually require the Node modules for now. Uh, because, you know, obviously this is two completely non-compatible environments, so you cannot really require and use Node modules within Deno, right? So they are completely different. Uh, hey, Mepatrix, welcome to the stream. Okay, so this is kind of core idea behind the Deno, right? So we got uh, the set of built-in commands, I am very interested to, to check out how the testing, linting, bundling, and formatting works. I mean, the formatting, I think they just throw in the prettier basically, and that's it. Uh, I'm curious about the band bundling because essentially, uh, from what I understood, it gives you a way to create a single standalone uh, executable that you can just ship somewhere, right? Um, or maybe was it compile? I remember reading a bit more like this is what they have right now, but um, there is plans for more basically. But anyway, what we're gonna try to do here today is <clears throat> build a very simple uh, server with Deno and see how exactly it works, right? So as I already said, I have installed Deno uh, in my VSL. So we got Deno version 0.3.0, which is currently the latest one. So it uses TypeScript and uh, 3.7 and uh, V8 version 8.1, which I honestly not sure what is included in it because the latest stable version of V8 is 8.0 and um, yeah, 8.1 is basically the edge one, what we currently have in the master branch of the repository. So I have no idea what the additions are there. I guess maybe they've unflagged the optional chaining and nullish coalescings, but we're, we're gonna find out. All right. Um, yeah, so as you can see, most of the things that Deno uh, has are actually built in TypeScript. I, uh, it, it also works with JavaScript, so we're gonna try both. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and create the main JS file for now and just do the console log hello world, just to see how exactly it works. And uh, then just run uh, Deno main js there we go okay so this works as expected i guess if we rename it into ts it should work equally good right um okay so it does have now the compilation steps and actually explicitly says that okay hey we're now compiling the typescript file but it's really nice that it works out of the box um so this is definitely an advantage in my book i mean you know as you might know i'm not a huge fan of typescript myself but I guess maybe what's always stopped me from using it was uh, the fact that, you know, you have to set up the compilation and it's always a pain in the ass to set it up with Babel and there's like a bunch of other problems. And if it works out of the box, maybe I would even switch to it. Um, how's your experience with VSL? In my case, Git was working extremely slow and sometimes auto opening the browser uh, I mean, I'm not using a lot of tools that auto open the browser or anything like that, but uh, it works perfectly fine. So like this is pretty much stable working environments that I use on, well, almost on a daily basis, right? So I have like two, uh, I have my working laptop, which is a MacBook and I have this computer, which uh, I use at home and I've been coding in VSL for about a year now. And yeah, there are some, you know, problems and minor issues, but nothing too major. The uh, performance can be usually solved by opening a defender and turning off the um, da -da -da, real time protection. Because this is like one thing that is um, a bit annoying is that the because the VSL stores files on the Windows side, the defender will scan all of them. And if you have like, if you work with Node.js, if you install Node modules, it's gonna take ages to scan all of that. So yeah, that speeds up things significantly. It's the same with Git actually. Um, other than that, I don't know, works perfectly fine. I'm really looking forward to VSL too, but we're gonna see how that goes. But anyway, going back to Deno. So we got this console log thing. Let us see how do we actually uh, okay, so this is the file example. Yeah, so note that by default, you basically can't read files. So you know what, let's just try and uh, do that. I'm gonna paste this here. Uh, so there is, if I understand correctly, top level of eight support already now. So while it complains that, hey, you can actually use a weight at the top level, you can. 
and uh, instead of going for four and using the file that we get from the input, I'm just gonna go um, and use test JSON. Let's just do it this way. And I'm gonna create a test JSON file over here. And we're just gonna be uh, hello. Um, yes, this probably should be like this, right? Worlds, there we go. I'm just gonna save that. Right, so if we open that and we copy it to std out, I assume that should work. All right, so if we if we go deno main ts, so this should fail. It will tell us, okay, permission denied. So as you can see, you cannot actually run deno that or any scripts in deno that try to read the files without explicit permissions, which is uh, why am I always typing done? Okay, I, I have to learn how to type deno now. Okay, so here we go. Allow read. Whoops, that is too much. And then we go main TS and there we go. So it actually reads the file, it prints us the stuff. Uh, it's a very nice security feature. I'm wondering if there is, there would be a way to compile it to an app that explicitly has those permissions granted. I assume it is. Um, wait a second. So what kind of flags do we have? We have bundle. This is, so I assume this is basically gonna bundle the scripts, compile bundle and everything else. We have completions, we have eval, we have fetch, fetch the, okay, so you can explicitly say just fetch the dependencies for me. We got the FMT, let's try it, FMT main JS, uh, main TS, there we go, okay. So once you run the FMT, it literally fetches the uh, pre-tier, I guess. Yep, that was pre-tier with a bunch of dependencies. And it formatted the file. I mean, obviously, you know, nothing changed that much, but uh, it's kind of nice. What else do we have here? We got info about cache related source. We got install. Okay, so yeah, so install is one of the also cool features is basically the difference uh, between, you know, node having NPM to install global uh, executables and Deno having uh, install command directly in the Deno itself to install ex global executables, or I guess, you know, they're not necessarily global. You can install it locally as well. We got the REPL run, uh, so this is Deno run is the default basically alias for Deno. Then we got tests. We gotta figure out how to run tests as well. Um, so install, I remember seeing it somewhere in the, um, what do you call it? Somewhere in here, I think, file permissions. Where was the install thing? Um, 10, 10, 10, there we go. Installing the executables. Yeah, so basically the idea is that you can run Deno install then you can give a file name and then you can give a script name and permissions, which will install this as local executable wherever your Deno path is that you can then just simply invoke, right? So let us, uh, so there was a server thing somewhere around here. I skipped around with it, but uh, let's try building a server, right? So let's start with a very basic server that just, uh, accepts the connection, there we go. So we got our uh, server over here. We're gonna start with that, All right? So let's see what we have here. So we got listener. So this is basically done a listen. This says, okay, we're gonna listen on port 8080. I also assume that if we look, oh, nice. Okay, so you get full on uh, docs right away. So we can give it a host name, which defaults to 000, which is nice. And you can also get, um, get a way to give it a transport, which means we can also listen for UDP packages or Unix sockets, which is kind of neat. Okay, cool. So you can listen and then we consume the listener by using uh, a synchronous iteration. So we are for await connection of listener and then just uh, basically, okay, in this case, we copy the connection back to itself. So whatever we send to it is gonna be sent back, which is, I mean, I guess we could try that, but I, that, that feels completely useless, right? So <laughs> just as a demo, basically, right? So I guess this is gonna fail, right? So we're, we're, we need to allow um, allow net, allow network, there we go. Yes, allow Deno to work, please, come on. There we go, okay. And I guess if we open localhost 8080, uh, yeah, it's not gonna send us anything because we are not sending anything in there. Okay, let's try. Let's try something a bit more fun. And let's try actually using one of the packages they have. So they have uh, two modules, uh, category, catalogs, I guess, categories. The first one is uh, standard modules that Deno comes with. Uh, theoretically, it actually doesn't come with them. This is also a very interesting uh, idea. So that's, you know, the STD standard lib of your, um, 
executable is actually lives on the web as well. So you can actually pull it. Right here's how they solve the versioning. Again, this is, you know, the REST API and versioning all, all comes down here. And we can use, there's like prettier logging colors. I, I assume there's like coloring. Code resets, uh, okay, background. Yeah, okay, so you literally can like have a default module for coloring the console logging, I guess, with, yeah, with pretty basic uh, escape sequences. Okay, so this is the default ones. It seems fine, like the FS is probably what you would mostly use. Uh, MTDR sync, ensure file, ensure symlink. Yeah, okay, so this is like a typical uh, working with files, we can actually, you know what, we can actually just, yeah, start with, let's let's start with this. So let's say we are gonna read our JSON file and we are going to, um, there we go, we're gonna read our data file. Let's call it this, is gonna be, uh, let's rename that to data JSON. We're gonna reply with a data JSON uh, to whoever uh, basically asks us, right? So, which means that we need some sort of a server. I, um, this is where the third-party modules come in. So this is essentially uh, NPM analog for uh, Deno, right? So we got our uh, module registry where you can publish. I'm not actually sure, how do you publish here? So let's see, to add to this list, edit database JSON. Okay, so you literally just send a pull request, which I mean, is, uh, I guess it works in the beginning, but that is, that sounds like a pretty annoying way of publishing packages. Maybe I'm wrong here, but on the other hand, you know, you don't actually have to submit them there because it, so long as it's available as a URL, you're gonna be perfectly fine, right? So let's see, HTTP. So we got Kai, which is a tiny elegant HTTP client. Uh, might be useful, let's just open it for now. We got, okay, millisecond formatting. We got Oak, the framework for Danish middleware. Okay, so let's see that. Uh, we got promise, okay, this is clients. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so they only have two, uh, like one client, okay, couple of client libraries and one framework for middlewares. So let's see this Oak thing. And I guess, I, I mean, yeah, I think this basically just is the data from the repo, Oak server. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, all right, this seems very Express-like, so let's just grab that. And I assume this is gonna be as easy to use as you might imagine. So we are, we don't, we no longer need that, right? We don't really need, uh, well, okay. In this case, if I leave it as is, um, then it basically should, let me see. So if, we, if I do that, it's gonna fail right now, if I understand correctly. So it's basically gonna say that uh, we don't have permissions to read the file. Uh, meanwhile, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, why the blue underline of the word deno and why the red one on a wait? Uh, so the red one on a wait because um, the top level of wait is not yet supported by default in most environments, but deno does support it. Uh, the blue underline under Deno, where where do you see that? Um, blue underline of the word Deno. Um, oh, I guess it, it, that probably was my, um, what do you call it? Like the, the thing that basically proofreads the words and tells you if you have any typos, so it probably doesn't know the word Deno, so it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. So we need uh, allow read flag, right? And now it should actually grab everything from cache. Okay, it won't actually show anything because we are not, um, was it 8080? No, it wasn't 8080, was it 8000? Okay, so actually the first port was correct. We should probably console log something. There we go, it actually works. Hey, let me just zoom in for a bit. Um, that is probably too large, okay. Right, so we did that, we listen on this. I guess we could just swap it to zero and then we could just say console log started, uh, started on um, 000800, right? So save that. If we restart this, uh, theoretically, okay, so it recompiles the file. It's kind of nice that it shows you everything that it does and you know, as long as the cache doesn't change it basically, Oh, okay, I guess it does, it won't log once the server starts, interesting. So I guess it just freezes here and handles the requests, all right. Okay, let's see how do we actually handle the requests with the oak. So we got, okay, use is basically your middleware, you got the context and you got the next. 
How do you handle the routing? Do you have router? Yes, you have router. There we go. Okay, so we actually need to import router from Oak. All right, there we go. Uh, I, yeah, okay, it auto deletes it. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 router. Okay, and then we got create a new router and then we say that. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna copy all of that for now. And we're gonna edit it real quick. Okay, da -da -dum, so we don't need application anymore. I am gonna use the data JSON over here, right? And do, 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 context. Okay, so this is gonna be hello worlds. Yeah, that seems relatively straightforward. Books values. So I guess we can just say data here. And we can kill that because we don't need it. Let's do it this way. Okay, create an app for router routes, router allowed methods. We don't need that. And then await listen. So I think that should basically do it, right? It is a bit annoying that it underlines the await with reds, but I guess there is probably some way to, to enable the, um, the top level await everywhere. Okay, so we got this. And if we go to data, that should be a JSON. That seems to work perfectly fine. Cool. Okay, that was a lot easier than I expected. This is basically like, um, yeah, it's very close to express and what you would expect from that. So you even have stuff for serving the static content. So you get this specific send method that you can just call on a static content. Neat, okay. That was a lot faster and easier than I expected. Uh, what else do we have here? We have that uh, Kai, which is the HTTP client. That uh, looks perfectly fine. I wonder if it has, so, I mean, the thing is that since the Deno says it's gonna be compatible with browsers, right? It, it means that it should have uh, fetch as well. So let's, let's give it a shot, shall we? Um, so we get fetch, right? So let's just go this and we'll get context. And I'm gonna say that this is a sync and I'm gonna say context response. Buddy, I'm mean, not a fan of that. I would prefer uh, having the API similar to Fastify, for example, because I think they handle the the whole like framework a lot nicer than Express or Koa or whatever. But you know, we're probably gonna get there at some point. Okay, um, let me think. First of all, I'm kind of curious if the async method will work. Probably should, right? Because it theoretically doesn't. Ma it shouldn't matter at least uh, for the Deno. If it's sync or a sync, yeah, there we go. That works perfectly fine. So let's see. Um, there was Pokemon API or something like this, right? Poke API. There we go. So we are just gonna grab this, and uh, to, 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 let me think. I want to go here, and then we're gonna say result is gonna be await fetch. Uh, that is a bit too much line breaks, and we are gonna get. Type ability Pokemon. Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, let's just let's just let's just grab this and send it back because why not? Then we're gonna say then res res JSON because we're gonna get it JSON, and we're gonna say just send the res back, right? Um, so theoretically, I need to restart that. I wonder if there's like watch flag or something in the way that you know you don't have to actually manually. That works. It has fetch by default. Okay, that's that's pretty great actually. All right. Um. Yeah. Here's the question. Does it have then or run help? Is there a reload? Reload the source code cache. That is not what we want. There is no remote. Do not. Okay. So there's some really nice config flags here. Okay. Allow all. Allow blah blah blah. Write read cached only config current thread. Help import map lock uh, log level no remote reloads reload everything reload specific modules seed so I guess there is no way for right now to sort of hot reload or anything like that I wonder if they have the plans an interesting question um let me see so if we go to the deno let us see if they have a plans for hot reload or anything like that uh, hot reload major features for one oh okay it is mentioned in here hot reloading 
It will be hot reloading, restarting would lose all states. Okay, uh, one kill in there. Okay, not needed. Right, okay, so they they basically have the hot reloading plan, but it's not landed in the deno itself yet, which is, um, makes sense. I mean, you know, V1 doesn't really need to have it. It's a nice feature, but it's perfectly fine without having that. Um, okay, again, since we're compatible with browser, I should be able to just say this, right? And if I restart this server, that, that is no while well on press. There we go. We should get a nicely formatted JSON now. There we go. I mean, that's it's actually pretty snappy. I'm surprised. Uh, here's the question. I'm very interested in what I want to do. I want to open Task Manager and I want to see the footprint uh 30 megs and that is including the json that it basically fetched and held in memory right so that is very slick okay here's uh let's try compiling let's try compiling i'm very curious about that um so deno i actually want the whole thing right so i want to say compile uh cannot resolve module no wait what was it deno bundle what was the command <laughs> Deno bundle, right, deno, right, so we need compile, but we replace compile with bundle. Uh, okay, the other way around, I guess. Deno bundle, main TS. Oh, okay, I guess, wait a second. I remember see. oh, it was deno install, right. I'm an idiot, okay. So we bundle that. Whoa, okay, <laughs> I guess. I guess we need, uh, let's call it server TS. So I guess by default, it just writes to STD out, which again makes sense, but uh, okay. So we basically, once you bundle, you get the complete one file that you can just execute and won't pull anything out of the remote dependencies, which is pretty damn convenient. So let's have a look at it. Right, so essentially Webpack, integrated right into Deno itself, which is quite nice. It does not minify anything, but you know, in case of uh, Deno, Node.js and server side, it's not really important. Right, that's kind of neat. Okay, so what can we do? We can, we should be able to basically say this, right? Um, where's my run commands and server TS. Okay, so it still compiles it because it is in TypeScript and what is happening here, reserved words. Why are you complaining about await? So now it complains about top level await. Interesting. That so this is our read JSON, right? So there we go. And uh, why are you complaining? I mean, I guess we could move that reading over here. Right. Okay. Let's see. Is that is that a bug or am I just missing something? Okay. Yep. Okay. So it's. <laughs> This is slightly amusing. So basically, if you if you start the main main file, right, it works perfectly fine. So we got our server, it works okay, and we can interrupt it. But as soon as you bundle it, the top level await stops working for some reason. So we go server TS, it goes, hey, there's a reserved word, you are not allowed to do top level await. Interesting. Um, you can run it as, can you? Um, it, no, it doesn't have the X flag on it, right? Server TS. So that is, I mean, it's not, a, not an executable and it also shouldn't have the, it doesn't have the header to be an executable. We will install it once we figure this out. So essentially what I can do is I can just do that, right? And just say console log listening on 8080. So this should start listening and uh, we should be theoretically fine. Okay, let's try that. So if I start that, uh, it does not do that. Okay, I'm... I did save it, right? We do not get the logging, but the server does work perfectly fine. Interesting, how the... Oh, because the promise never finishes. So we actually don't need that. So theoretically that should work just as good, right? Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. So now if I compile or bundle that, let's call it correctly. 
no longer should throw errors on the top level of weight, which again, it's, it's a bit weird that it does, but okay. And then we go server TS. Okay, cool. So now it works. All right. And um, here, here's the question I want. Did it, did it bundle the file that it read from the file system? So um, to do a fetch data, was it right? Yeah, okay, so this is our data. And if I rename the data JSON, it will actually crash. Yeah, okay, cool. So it doesn't bundle the file from the file system, which, you know, makes perfect sense. But I just wanted to make sure. Okay. All right, so now we got this server TS, which means we can do deno install and uh, what was the signature for it? Deno install exe name, let's call it test server. And then command is um, deno install server. So then we go, I guess I should be able to say server TS, right? So this, the, I should be able to link the local server. And then we go allow net and allow reads. Although this will crash because the data file will not be there. <laughs> but anyway, let's try that. Okay, okay, so the installer is also a third party component that's gonna be pulled on the map. This is really cool. So that means that if you are not using any of those features, they will never even make it to your machine, which is pretty cool. I think I already have it in my path. So theoretically, we should be able to just do this. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see. Um, so what I need, I need uh, this and I need to edit my Z -shir, uh, Z -sh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, right, so it's a different one. Okay, so it's not the same as the Dino install path. Okay, uh, that's fine. Yes, let's save it, source it. And now we should be able, what are you, what are you complaining about for safety? Oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm gonna fix that later, test server. And it actually works. Okay, cool. And it, it will pick up so it will work in the current folder. So whenever you run it, there should be this data file. Um, this is kind of neat. Um, this is, <laughs> I mean, I am surprised at how great this works. We can actually remove the server. So that should still work, right? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it basically links the folder. Uh, okay, let me bundle this. So it links the wherever you put the file, it links it to the binary. Interesting. The size of the test server is 600 uh, kilobytes, as you can see here, which I mean, it's, you know, it's decent size, but it's not too terrible considering we're talking server side, which again, you know, uh, what is the, I wonder, what is the size of a deno actually? Um, so if we go to local bin, and that is 56 megabytes. You just get one file, which is really damn impressive, to be honest. Okay, cool. Um, so let me see BXJS, uh, where is the deno? Okay, remove the server. Now, one thing is that essentially, since you don't have a uh, package JSON or anything like that, or NPM scripts, you do need to create something like a make file, right? Where you would have your uh, commands, which would mean for run, we would have deno, um, we would have this main TS, right? Which, I mean, I guess it's not like, not a big issue. And normally you wouldn't, I mean, I guess you would need something like this anyway, right? Uh, so let's, to build is going to be deno bundle main TS server TS copy that just so that it's basically in the repo in the final repo and there is some way to reproduce that. Let's call it install and it's going to be lip deno install. Okay, you know what? Let's inspect what it actually uh, what it actually installs. I am kind of curious. Okay, da -da -da. yeah, that looks fine. I just do another line break here. There we go. Okay, so that's still it still complains about something. What do you complain? Import path cannot end with .ts extension. Interesting, but I imagine this is not gonna fly, right? So this is probably gonna break if I do that. 
Uh, cannot find, yeah, okay. So I guess the you have to have a specific tweaks for TypeScript for it to act the same way that the Deno does. Interesting. Okay, anyway, uh, so let's see. I wanted to inspect a uh, test server. How does it actually look? Uh, okay, let's cat Deno bin test server. So, okay, so this is simple shell script that says that the base year is wherever we are. And then if it's, a, so it has some additional stuff for Tsigwin, which is nice. And then it literally just runs Deno with the flags you pass to it and the, the uh, URL for the file. Now that's another cool thing about the Deno is that uh, you can run remote files, right? So the, if you have, an example somewhere. Um, yeah, so you can literally just do that, right? So we got the deno example. I mean, come on, chip, what? Just copy this, please. There we go. No. All right, fine. <laughs> so you can literally just say, hey, deno, run an example file for me or remote file or remote CLI. Just, like, I can imagine this is going to work extremely well in the corporate environments where you have like, you know, have to have isolated environments and you're only allowed to have like one binary that doesn't need uh, admin permissions. This seems to be extremely well thought through basically is yeah, t definitely great. Okay, let me just uh, I guess. Da -da 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 -dum. Yeah, okay, so this is fine. I guess I'm gonna do echo server.ts into git ignore git add this m initial version okay sign the commit right uh i'm gonna create a repo and push it to the github if you have any questions feel free to throw them into the chat right now if not, then, well, the, you know, even though it's not version 1.0 and there's probably going to be some minor breaking changes, uh, at least according to the um, the umbrella issue for the version 1.0 release, that actually looks damn great. Like, there is... I remember reading that they are planning to have the compile command... Back. I'm pressed on the wrong thing. I remember reading that there... Or was it in one of the presentations from Ryan Dahl? They want to have the Deno compile command that would essentially build one standalone binary that includes the Deno itself plus your um, your code, which sounds really damn cool. And uh, this is pretty damn exciting. I'm 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 you know I, like after trying this out, I'm really hyped about Deno, and I can see a lot of use cases where it already would be a lot nicer than Node.js uh, to be. Uh, you know, to be used essentially. He said that in JSCon for you. Okay, that's probably the talk. Uh, this was the last one he had, right? Last year, I think like December or November or something. Yeah, it's probably it. But yeah, this is this is pretty damn awesome. Okay, so let's see what I have. Uh, what do you call it? Deno simple server. Let's go Deno simple server. Um, simple HTTP server built with Deno. Okay, uh, we need a readme file, but uh, that's fine. I can just uh, shamelessly grab it off the other repo as usual. <laughs> um, let's see, exploring Strappy. We can just take it from here because why not? Raw, copy all of that. Uh, no, 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 not folder. Readme MD. Uh, no, not ND. That is not a thing. Okay, simple. HTTP server with Deno. Downgrading is simple. Du -du -du. HTTP server with Deno. There we go. For um, trying Deno, I will need to put out the video link here. Project descriptions, mode demo showing how to create a simple HTTP server with de Deno. There we go. Related links. So we're gonna put Deno here and uh, this is gonna be Deno land. Right. Uh, I think everything else is fine. This MIT license. Thank you very much. I think we're basically done here. Sam. 
add readme. There we go. Okay, cool. Now I just need to push it to the GitHub and we are basically done. So if you guys have any more questions, uh, should, suggestions, you want to try something else with Deno, you have some crazy ideas, throw them into the chat right now. If not, then that's basically it. Um, I guess we can just wrap it up here for today. I also feel like I need to drink some more uh, calf medicine because my throat is starting to be like that. This year's flu is just annoying as hell. <laughs> Looking forward to be production ready. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've read that actually there's quite a few people who are already using it in production for like month, basically, at least internally, which sounds crazy, but it actually seems pretty stable. I mean, the Deno itself is, is essentially just a tiny wrapper around the um, V8 with some rust on top, right? Which, I mean, rusty V8, I believe, has been around for some time. Or maybe I'm mistaken, maybe I'm confusing it with something else. It's Rice TV 8. Is that the Deno thing? Okay, so Rice TV 8 is the. Oh, okay, right. I'm confusing. I'm definitely confusing it with something. I guess this is exactly the bindings that the uh, Ryan created for the V8 when he switched from uh, using Golang into Rust. Interesting. Looking forward to see how the development ecosystem will evolve. Yeah, so the one thing that I see that definitely is going to be a problem for Deno is the uh, difference between, you know, there's this NPM has how many packages now? Like, is there a statistic somewhere? Status, um, NPM number of packages. Uh, no, that's definitely not true. <laughs> that's definitely not true. It's probably more than a billion now already, right? Come on. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if that's gonna work. Uh, okay, it does work. Okay, 1.2 billion packages, or is it is it million? What is this um, CPAN NPM? Where is NPM? NPM, uh, can I just please get NPM without everything else and just give me a bloody number? Where is it? NPM, that is three, okay, 1.2 million packages. That's a lot, right? And uh, yeah, so the problem is that Deno will have to provide some sort of a way to get compat with those packages because people like people just won't rewrite them from Node.js to Deno just because Deno is here, right? And like, I mean, Node.js is gonna be around for a while and it's still a viable, platform to work on. Uh, but like there's two things. First of all, you can use node packages within Deno using something like JSPM, right? So we got the JSPM thing and they have the uh, ES modules CDN, which means that if the, uh, like if NPM module is ES module and it's browser compatible, you can literally just import it in Deno using the dev JSPM IO and then slash module name and just use it there. Now, the problem is uh, a lot of node modules rely on nodes stuff, right? Like FS, like, I don't know, workers, whatever you can imagine is in node API. And those obviously won't work even if converted to AS modules, they will fail because the um, you cannot pull FS from node into Deno, right? Because they work differently. Now, the cool thing is that I already seen um, the compat module somewhere. I, I think, uh, wait a second, I think it was in the Deno land actually. There was, uh, no, 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 I'm pressing the wrong thing again. Uh, where was the standards? And I think it was over here, come on. There was, a uh, no, there we go. So there's already a STD node, which is basically aiming to have a compatibility layer for Node.js STD leap, which means once this is finished, you would actually can basically just load the node modules and use them as is. And obviously, you know, it's still lacking a lot. Like, yeah, there's maybe one fifth, one sixth of all the modules is implemented, but you know, it's getting there. It'll be very interesting to see if they actually finish that or if they drop it for whatever reason. The interesting thing is that you can can actually do the common JS module loading right now from the local files using the create require approach the same way that it works uh, in the 
you know, ES modules and Node.js. Uh, the problem, of course, is that it won't actually work unless there are other modules that are actually implemented within the Deno itself. But anyway, it's a pretty exciting project. Really cool to see how far it came from the, you know, the beginning. Uh, it's been quite fun to play around with it. So it's definitely uh, nice to see that. A lot easier than I expected. Uh, TypeScript, I mean, okay, there was a few problems, especially with building and the fact that it does support top level awaits if you do it uh, on when you just run and then it doesn't when you bundle it, which is a bit, I mean, it, it sounds like a bug to be honest. But yeah, there we go. All right, uh, does seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you found out something interesting about Deno. Maybe you even uh, decided to try it out for yourself. I absolutely encourage you to do so. It seems like a very nice tool. Um, as usual, if you missed the stream, the VOD will be available on Twitch immediately or on YouTube in a couple of hours. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to join our Discord chat and throw them in there. We'll be more than happy to um, hear them. And, you know, if you just want to talk about Deno, again, more than happy to do so in our Discord. Yeah, that's basically it from my side. Thank you guys very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye.